simplify 3 times the principal root of 500 x to the third power. So what we're going to do here is try to break up the stuff that we have under the radical sign into some things that are perfect squares. And then we can separately take the square root of those things and then leave the leftovers inside of the radical sign. And the other thing we have to remember is principal square root, this radical sign here, really means the positive square root of a number. So let's think about this a little bit. So let's see if we can break down the 500x to the third into some perfect squares and some things that maybe aren't perfect squares. Because 500 is not a perfect square, and x to the third is not a perfect square right from the get-go. So when we went when in doubt, we can just start to prime factorize this, and maybe we'll discover some perfect squares. So 500 is divisible by 5, and it's 5 times 100. And you probably already recognize that 100 is a perfect square. It is 10 times 10. But if you didn't know that, you could keep factoring it. You could say, look, 100 is 2 times 50. 50 is 2 times 25. And 25 is 5 times 5. So you would see the perfect squares here, because you, you would see two twos. You would see two twos, so you have a 2 times a 2, and you have a 5 times a 5. So you could really just say that 100 is 10 times 10, or you could say it's 2 squared times 5 squared. Either of those things would allow you to break this down a little bit. And then x to the third, that's clearly just the same thing. x to the third, right over here, is clearly the same thing as x squared times x, which allows us to break it down into a perfect square and something that is not a perfect square. So let's just rewrite these numbers under the principal root sign. So this is going to be equal to 3 times, and I'll save some space here, 3 times the 500 I can rewrite it as I can rewrite it as 100 times 5, and 100 I can rewrite as 10 squared. So this right here I can rewrite as 10 squared. I don't have to do all of this business down here. But this will help you recognize that it's a perfect square. It's 4 times 25. Both of those are perfect squares. So it's 100, 10 squared. So I'm going to write this as 10 squared, 10 squared times 10 squared times 5. That's the 500 right over there. And then I can rewrite the x to the third as, as x squared times x x squared times x. And then let me extend my principal root sign right over here. And we know from basic exponent properties, because that's really what we're doing here, This uh, taking the square root of something is really the same thing as taking it to a fractional exponent. So it's the same properties that apply. This is the same thing as 3 times the principal root of 10 squared, principal root of 10 squared times the principal root, let me do it this way, times the principal root of 5 times the principal root times the principal root of x squared times the principal root of x. And now we can simplify these things. So the principal root of 10 squared, or the principal root of 100, is going to be positive 10. It, 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 negative 10 is also equal to 100, but when you take the principal root, you only care about the positive square root. So this right over here is going to be 10. 5 is not a perfect square, so we'll just leave this expression as the square root of 5. Square root of x squared. So here you might be tempted, and this is I've seen this done many, many times. You, you're tempted to just say, hey, that's just going to be x. The square root of x squared is x. But what if, what if x is negative? So what if, what if x is negative? Let's say that x was negative 2. Then x squared would be x squared would be 4, and the principal root of 4 is equal to positive 2. It's equal to the positive square root. So you can't just say that this thing over here is going to be equal to x, because in this case, it was equal to the absolute value of x. And so that's what we do. We say that this is equal to, regardless of whether x is positive or negative, we want the positive square root. So you would say it's equal to the absolute value of x. That's what that principal root does for us. And so now if we simplify it a little bit, remember with multiplication, it doesn't really, and since we're just multiplying a bunch of expressions here, it doesn't matter what order we do it. We can switch the order so we have all of the stuff out of the radicals multiplying times each other first, and then we have the radicals. So we have 3 times 10 times the absolute value of x. 3 times 10, 3 times 10 is 30. So we have 30 times the absolute value of x times the absolute value of x times the square root of 5 
times the square root of 5 times the square root of x times the square root of x. And both you have the principal root of the square root of 5 and the square root of x. You can actually rewrite this right here as the square root of 5x. You're taking the product of two things that are raised to the same power. That's the same thing as taking their product and then raising them to that fractional power, or I guess another way to think of it, and then taking the square root. So this all simplifies to 30 times the absolute value of x times the absolute value of x times the square root of 5x.